Hello all, and welcome to another Techniques video. This is Emmanuel Rivera talking, and today I will be telling you about genetic tools. I will be talking about forward and reverse genetic screens, as well as RNAi. Genetic screens are a widely used tool in biological sciences that allow us to understand the genetic basis of a wide variety of behaviors and biological phenomena, such as diseases. To give an example, let's say we're interested in understanding the genetic basis of sleep behavior. To do so, we could utilize a model organism such as the fruit fly Drosophila melanogaster. Nowadays, we know that flies sleep, or at least they show a sleep-like behavior that pretty much resembles our own sleep, and we can quantify the sleep of a fly throughout the day as we see in this plot. On the y-axis, we see how many minutes the fly has slept within bouts of 30 minutes, and we can track the amount of sleep throughout the light and dark periods of a 24 hours day as we see on the x-axis. A scientist may postulate the following research question. What genes are important for proper sleep behavior? This is a question that can and historically has been addressed by using genetic screens. We could answer this research question by using a forward genetic screen. In the forward genetic screen approach, we start from a behavior of interest and aim to identify a gene or set of genes that regulates such behavior. In our example, we aim to determine the identity of a gene involved in the regulation of the fruit fly sleep behavior. Using the forward genetic approach, we will disrupt the function of many genes and then determine the identity of the one that when disrupted affected the sleep behavior, let's say by decreasing the sleep throughout the day. This gene will be our putative gene for sleep regulation. You may be wondering, how do you disrupt the function of genes? Well, this is done by randomly inducing mutations in different genes which is achieved by exposing the organism, in this case the flies, to either mutagenic reagents or radiation. After the animals have been exposed to the mutagenic process, lines of putative mutants are isolated. These lines are then characterized for behavior until one is found where the desired disrupted behavior is observed. In the case of our example, a decrease in the amount of sleep. Now that we have a line that shows the desired behavior, we want to identify the gene involved in such a disruption of the behavior. This has classically been done by using approaches such as mutational breeding and gene mapping, or more cutting-edge approaches such as genome sequencing or next-generation RNA sequencing, which allow us to compare the expression profile of our mutant line to a line of multi-genetic background allowing us to identify differentially expressed genes which are putatively involved in the observed disruptive behavior. These steps allow us to identify the gene or genes involved in the regulation of the behavior of interest. In other words, now we know the identity of the gene or genes that when mutated disrupted the behavior of interest. This gene or genes are the ones involved in the regulation of the behavior of interest under normal conditions. The same problem can be addressed using a reverse genetic screen approach, going from a gene of interest to a behavior. Let's say that after doing a literature review, you get to the prediction that gene X is involved in the regulation of fruit flies sleep behavior. How could we confirm this? In a reverse genetic screen, the involvement of the gene of interest on the behavior under study is confirmed by disrupting the gene and then observing whether this manipulation disrupts the behavior. In our example, we could disrupt the function of gene X by using different techniques or tools such as side-directed mutagenesis, generation of mutations by CRISPR, or knocking down the gene by means of RNA of interference or RNAi. After disrupting gene X's function, the animals are behaviorally characterized and if the gene is indeed involved in the regulation of our behavior of interest, in our example, sleep, the sleep behavior will be affected. Let's say we choose to disrupt the function of gene X by means of RNAi. How would this work? 
If you remember the classic dogma of biology, DNA is transcribed into a messenger RNA that is later translated into a protein. In our example, we will have DNA of gene X being transcribed and ultimately translated into a protein X. RNA eyes or RNAs of interference are small transcripts of RNA that can be expressed by different genetic means and have the capacity of binding on the messenger RNA transcript product of a gene, impeding its translation into the protein that it should be coding for, pretty much knocking down the function of that gene. In our example, we could express an RNA I against the messenger RNA of gene X, and by doing so, we will be inhibiting the translation of this messenger RNA into protein X. So we have knocked down the function of gene X. In a reverse genetic screen approach, if gene X is indeed involved in the regulation of sleep, when knocking down the function of gene X by means of RNA I, the sleep behavior will be disrupted. For example, we could see a decrease in sleep. By knocking down gene X, we have identified it as being involved in the regulation of the sleep behavior. Summarizing, we have seen two different approaches to perform genetic screens. First, the forward genetic screen, in which we go from an observed behavior or biological function of interest, and then we identify the gene or genes that regulate such behavior or biological function. We also discuss the reverse genetic screen, in which we start from a gene of interest and by disrupting it, we determine its role in the regulation of a behavior or biological function.